This is the Canon EOS R6, 20 million pixels of full frame goodness. And what a camera it is. But what about if we could take that 20 million pixel full frame wonderful camera and turn it into a medium format camera with a pixel count in the hundreds of millions. Hello, I'm Dave and this is Let's Click Photography. And that's exactly what we are gonna to do today. We're gonna to take this Canon R6 and manipulate it so that we can get a medium format looking image with a pixel count that is gonna blow, well, if not your mind, there's a good chance it might blow my computer. This is gonna be a huge picture if everything goes to plan. And what is that plan? Well, it's to take a massive picture uh, with this building behind me as the main subject matter. And normally we take a shot like this on something like maybe 16 millimeter or 24 millimeter. Not today, no. Today we're gonna take this shot using an 85 millimeter lens. And we're gonna take a wide angle picture using this lens on this camera and by doing that we're going to be able to transform the look and the size of the images that come out of this Canon R6 camera body. Now you don't have to have a Canon R6, you can of course try this with any camera body. And what we're going to do today is a method of manipulation that was made famous by a guy called Ryan Brenizer and uh, it's mostly known as the Brenizer method but it's also been called the Bokarama method as well and what we're going to do is we're going to use this method to make the subject absolutely pop out of the frame have some beautiful bokeh in the background some beautiful out of focus loveliness in the foreground and just get an image that is going to look brilliant now we're going to do a few things here out in the field to make our life in post-processing a little bit easier and of course that's going to help the computer out as well to process such a massive shot. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to have to be on manual mode and the reason for that is because you don't want the exposure changing. We're going to take multiple shots, probably somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 shots. What we also need to do as well is set our white balance manually we don't want auto white balance we are removing all of the auto features from the camera now we've got all of our settings input into the camera and for me on this occasion that is f2.2 1 640th of a second iso 100 so that's all the settings done now it's just time to shoot that's got a bit of depth to this building so i'm going to focus on the door and the door set back slightly from the front wall and i think at this kind of range i might just get that depth of field right to hit the door and the front wall and then the focus to start to fall off as the walls curve around. I'm focused in and now I'm gonna switch onto manual focus. I want the focus to remain the same throughout. As I take the shots, I'm gonna take loads and loads of shots up and down the subject, left and right, covering every single part of the scene coming down low not changing my position merely changing the angle that I am taking my shots at oh so I've actually took about 50 shots I'm gonna do it one more time just to be on the safe side but you guys don't have to hang around for that I'll see you guys back at the office and let's see whether that Apple M1 chip can cope with um, a couple of hundred megapixel image Right, we're back and these file sizes are absolutely huge. We are in the hundreds of megapixels area. I've took the liberties of putting a few together already, but I just want to quickly show you the process and show you a brief overview of how I've gone about merging all of these files together. For our main shot, 50 images is what we got. 50 20 million pixel images. And that brought us in at a massive, Massive 254 million pixel image. 254. It is huge and size is impressive. So we got our 50 images selected and we're gonna go across to photo merge by right clicking on those images as we got them selected. Now over here on the right hand side, you've got three options, spherical, cylindrical and perspective. Which one works for you? You have to test decide for yourself because depending exactly how you've took your images will depend on which one works best 
in your circumstance. So have a play around, um, let it do the first one, whatever it opens it up on first, let it do that first, and then scroll through the other two. I'm finding that with the images that I've took today, cylindrical is working the best, but that doesn't mean to say that spherical wouldn't work on a different day. Uh, you've then got the option in here of doing a boundary warp where it warps your image to fill out the edges. Do fill edges where it uses AI to fill out those edges. I'm not gonna do that. This is a massive image. I don't mind cropping it down a little bit once I'm out of here. And I need to do some work anyway to sort out what will be some distortions within the image anyway. And I'll show you how to do those very briefly as well. So once we've got our merged image, we're happy with that. I'm gonna click merge allow the machine to do its thing. Now, as I say, for the one that I've done at the full resolution is 253,882 million pixels. Boom! Now, as I mentioned, there's some distortions that need sorting out. I'm gonna do those in Photoshop. You might be able to do these in Lightroom by just using the upright adjustment tool, uh, but I'm gonna do this in Photoshop. So I'm gonna right click on my image and take myself across into Photoshop by going to editing, editing Adobe Photoshop. It's always worthwhile to make a second copy whenever you open anything up in Photoshop. So you've got the original to go back to if you need to, and you just do that by clicking Command and J or Control and J on a PC. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Transform tool by clicking uh, Control and T or Command and T. And I'm gonna go and start to use my skew and distort tools and I'll start moving around the image to straighten it up, to get it right. And um, finally, we'll end up with an image that has removed all of the distortions. But if you're gonna try it and you want any more hints or tips, then ask away and hit that thumbs up on the way down there. I'll show you those images. I've been Dave, this has been Let's Click Photography, and I will see you guys on the next one pretty damn soon.